All right, so the point of a question like this is just to try and bring your knowledge about motion kind of full circle in a way. Um, back probably grade nine or something, you probably were exposed to some questions that involved velocities and distance. You know, if you're going 100 kilometers per hour, how far do you go in two hours or, you know, nice simple ones like that. And then you, you would have seen a few things like that in your science or math classes along the way. And now that you're exposed to a more serious form of physics, you're looking at a whole bunch of equations. Um, and so how does this all make sense? How are they all related? So originally you would have been exposed to D equals VT, or some people might say D equals ST for speed. You're not looking at uh, the direction at that point. And um, so, yeah, if we're looking for how far do you go 100 kilometers per hour for three hours, you just multiply those two out, the velocity times the time. And so that worked great. Um, so why do we have all these other equations? So that's where we're going to talk here. This makes the assumption that A is zero. And um, it, it, it only works if you're talking about an acceleration is zero and therefore the velocity isn't changing. And then there, that equation works fantastic. Um, but when you get into more real world types of things, there's accelerations going on. Velocity does change. And so that's why we get, we're run into um, more sophisticated formulas. So um, let's take a look at some of these more sophisticated formulas and just see how they might relate to our old favorite, easy, simple um, D equals VT. So uh, let's just grab a few from there. And if we had D equals V naught plus VF over two times T. And so um, what we have is we have the original velocity and the final velocity and divided by two. So uh, assuming that there is a constant change there, then you can say, let's just get the average velocity. So add the two and divide by two. and and then we can go back to that. So it's actually pretty darn similar to that equation. Um, what makes it different? Well, it's the fact that VO and VF, um, we're, we're making the assumption that they're different. But what if they were the same? Let's say we we're just talking about they're both Vs, V plus V over two. In other words, there's no change in velocity, so let's just call it velocity. Well, then V plus V is just two V over two, times t, and the twos cancel out, and we're left with d equals vt. And we're back to our old favorite. So yeah, basically what we can take from that is this that this more sophisticated looking formula, yeah, it, it's totally consistent what, with what we learned before. We just recognize that with what we learned before, it was just a simplified version of this. It was where the velocities were identical. There's no acceleration. And so we were able to simplify it down. We didn't know it at the time, but it was a simplified version of a more sophisticated idea. Um, and so let's jump into another one. Let's say if we had D equals V naught T plus one half A T squared. There's one we use an awful lot in physics courses. Um, now, uh, if the velocity isn't changing, first of all, we can exchange that V naught with just V because there's no change in velocity. So no use calling it V naught or VF, it's just V. Um, also, uh, we have an acceleration in that last term. And so if the, ex if the V isn't changing, that means the acceleration is zero. So that means this whole term is gone. Anything times zero is zero. So we could say plus zero if we want. But bottom line is D equals VT. And we stop and we go, yeah, okay, same thing. We took a more sophisticated formula, but if we made the same kinds of assumptions that we did before without perhaps knowing it, um, then uh, yeah, it works out the exact same. So everything's consistent so far. Um, let's try another. VF uh, equals V naught plus AT. 
Well, uh, again, if a is zero, that whole term is gone and we're left with vf equals v naught. And if there's no change in velocity, then yeah, we know that vf equals v naught, we'll just call it v. So again, it all makes sense. These formulas aren't anything new. A um, little more sophisticated, but same consistent message going on here. One more. Vf squared equals v naught squared plus 2ad. All right, so again, acceleration is zero. We're left with vf squared equals v naught squared. Uh, square root both sides and vf equals v naught. And again, that's just telling us that if acceleration is zero, then there's no change in velocity. True enough. We know that to be true. So um, bottom line is the point of this little exploration is to say, don't look at these formulas as something new and wildly crazy. Uh, they're a little more sophisticated than what you've run into before, but they're totally consistent with all of that old stuff you did back in the day.